Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Devotions. I hope everybody's having a good day so far. Let's get to our prayer request here. Kathy Smith's COVID test was negative. Now her husband's sick, too. Pray they're both better soon. Uh, Barbara Acker needs prayer because she had surgery on her head and it's not healing properly. Need prayer for Shane and Lori Simmons. Shane fell from 30 feet up and was flown to the hospital. He had surgery on his head and brain. He has many other injuries and is in a medically induced coma. Tweets was exposed to COVID from a friend. A friend has been tested, pray it's negative, and she doesn't get it. Ashley and husband Jason have the virus. She's a flight nurse and he's an emergency room nurse at Vanderbilt. Pray they're well soon. Vicky's G's daughter, Kim, is struggling to get a car for work. Pray she's able to find one and can afford it. Bone Daddy 2 and his wife have an unspoken request. Angela Hernandez found out she has breast cancer. Pray for healing. April and Justin's seven-year-old daughter's daughter had a heart transplant and the anti-rejection medicine isn't working. Pray, pray it will start to work. Sandra has a virus and is on a ventilator. She needs to go to another hospital be, to be put on a machine that will put oxygen in her blood, but they don't know if she can make it. Pray she will get the help needed and recover. Our scripture of the day comes from Matthew 6, 25-34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I need to pay attention to that, because I worry a lot. I need to try to listen to this. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grafts of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I'll read that again. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. He'll take care of you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. There's some great verses this morning, and it hits home for me, too, because I'm, I've am i always been kind of a worrier. And, you know, and it, it can cause you... To get sick too, and it doesn't help my Crohn's disease either. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to do these days. Okay, our devotion is entitled "Taught by Turkeys." <clears throat> do you know what a group of turkeys is called? It's called a I guess rafter or drafter. They put these big D's in front of the words, and that you don't know if that means for that or not. For that, that's how they do it. So anyway, it says rafter. Um, why am I writing about turkeys? Because I've just returned from a weekend at a mountain cabin. Each day I marveled at the train of turkeys parading past our porch. I'd never turkey watched before. They scratched fiercely with spectacular talons. Then they hunted and hunted and pecked at the ground, each 
eating, I assume. Since this was my first turkey observation time, I wasn't 100% positive. The scrawny scrubs in the area didn't look like they could sustain anything. Yet here were these turkeys, a dozen of them, all of which looked delectably plump. Watching those well-fed turkeys brought to mind Jesus' words in Matthew 6:26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Jesus uses God's provision for seemingly worthless birds to remind us of his care for us. If a bird's life matters, how much more does ours? Jesus then contrasts fretting about our daily needs with a life in which we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, one in which we're confident of his rich provision for our needs. Because if God can care for that rafter of wild turkeys, he can certainly look after you and me. Where have you seen God provide for something that you were worrying about? How might remembering and reflecting on his provision in the past help us not to be anxious in the future? Amen. Father, sometimes I get scared. I worry. I struggle to trust. Thank you for your care for me. Help me to remember your provision in the past so that I'm better able to trust your, you with future fears. And Lord, I want to pray today for everyone on the prayer list. Please help all of them with their different problems, Lord, and help anybody out there that's been affected by the virus. In the Lord's name I pray. Amen. I hope you all enjoyed this morning's devotions. It had special meaning for me, and I hope it did for you too. Please press that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Um, we had looks like a, a hard freeze out there last night. I don't see anything uh, really damaged. I haven't looked at the weather report yet. Um, but I don't, if it's like yesterday, it didn't get up to about 40. I think it got up to 48 degrees yesterday and uh, it's kind of breezy and everything so uh, chances are it's probably going to do that again today uh, it looks it looks nice out there just to look I don't really I don't really see any clouds just through the window here but you could see you know the excuse me the white frost on the uh, on the grass and it's pretty thick I'm surprised they're able to survive uh, the, one, the, the winter vegetables that, like they do. They, they will up to a certain, you know, when it gets super cold, like below 20 degrees, I'm probably going to have some problems. But it's been a great run no matter what. And there's plenty out there to harvest right now, especially turnips. So we'll get what we can. All right, everybody, I'll go for now, and uh, I'm going to let it warm up a little bit uh, before I do my walk outside. Uh, so, everybody, we'll see you later. God bless.